to share briefly how this, and when this nigun came down. <coughs> Those of you uh, that are from New Jersey, from Pesek, you know, Baruch Hashem, my family, our roots are, are deep in Pesek, way before Pesek became a Pesek Ira Kodesh. There was barely a minion there. And uh, my, my, my mother was born there. And uh, on one era of Shabbos, it must be now, wow, it must be like 17 years ago now, 16, 17 years ago. I went to go visit my grandparents' kvarm as close as I could get as, as a Koyan. Back then it was possible because there was nothing else there. And I realized that I don't think I ever wished them a good Shabbos properly. I, 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 that's what came to my heart, to my mind. So right away at that moment, and this usually doesn't happen, but a, a, a nigun came down with words immediately. I felt like a wind just going inside and out, and I had to hop it really fast. And uh, it came down with this nigun, but also in Yiddish, which I, I never happened before. But when I sing the Shabbos Kodesh, I'm thinking about wishing my grandparents a good Shabbos. This is how it came down originally. Oh, yeah, 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 Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Dear mother, dear father, sweet mother, sweet father, all of you, everyone, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. And uh, I just kept on singing it over and over again. I have Shabbos. Came back to Eretz and I realized it's a, it's, it's a strong second part. It doesn't have a first part. And it's in Yiddish, so I don't know who, was, you know who would sing it. But in my heart, that's what I'm singing. That's what I'm singing whenever we sing this nigun. But let's just say, let's sing this one more time, the Shabbos Kodesh, and please have in mind anyone that, uh, anyone that you wish, you could have wished them a good Shabbos, and in this world you didn't have a chance to. One time. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Shabbos to our beautiful children, those of us that have children, those of us that soon by Israel Hashem in the right time will have healthy, beautiful children. Just think about them for a second, how much if you, if, if you, they could x-ray your heart, they'd see, what do you want to give them? What do you want to give them? I want to give them Shabbos. You know, Shlomo wrote the Nigun, Mizemar, Mizemar, Shabbos. Where did he write this Nigun? He was doing a husband for his father at his father's, at his father's uh, funeral. And he realized that a lot of people leave their children real estate, other goods, whatever it is. And he's thinking to himself, you know, well, what did my father leave? What's my Yerusha? It's like Shabbos. So right there in Har Menuchos, that's where Reb Shlomo, that's where the Nigan came down, where the whole world is waiting to sing the song of Shabbos. But just like have in mind your, your, your children, our children, have in mind each other's children, children, grandchildren. The Shabbos should be clear, the Kaiman should be lasting, guarding them, they should be guarding it. Oh, yo, yo, yo. yourself a good Shabbos? Just wish yourselves a real, real, real strong kashrut, a connection to this te'imah, what's going to be when Mashiach comes, Yom Shekulah Shabbat. How much we long for Shabbos, and Shabbos comes, and 
we're always like, oh, I wish, I wish it could have been like this. So ask yourself, ask yourself, what do I long for most? I long for most to be in the moment. I long the most when Shabbos comes, Shani Shama, I'm there, I'm there. So it starts right now, this second. So just wish yourselves now, the strong one. Oh, yo, yo, yo.
project uh, recently, mm -hmm. Mamish recently, we just finished working on a, a really special project of um, an autobiography of Rib Shlomo. Meaning it's him telling over his whole story in first person. A, a massive book. It's Be'ez Hashem needs a lot of tefillahs to come out into the world. So Dab and Strong for it. There's been a big year, Baruch Hashem, of Reb Shlomo's Torah coming out into the world, and it should go weiter more and more, Be'ez Hashem. One of these, uh, so I was thinking about it for so long. What would, what would be a good name for, for a sefer like this? So whatever. Uh, Give Me Harmony was already taken for an album. <laughs> uh, Holy Brother was taken for a book. Dvash. Right? Dvash. Maybe the sweetest of the sweet, yeah. I was thinking maybe um, hold on to the last note. That was a phrase he said a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Hold on to the last note. And it was a phrase you hear, but I, I heard him teach it, what that actually means, hold on to the last note. He said that he learned in Mojitz what it means to hold on to the last note. He said, he explained, by the Mojitz Rebbe, you call it the Heilige Mojitz Rebbe, where there are kings of Negina, right? There are kings of music. Mamish princes, it's melucha, it's, it's kingdom. And in Mojitz, the Rebbe would go, Ahia, ma, 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 hold on to the last note. Ah. So I always thought it meant like, hold on to the last note till Mashiach comes, which it also means that, hold on to the last note. Hold on to the last note. But whenever he said, give me harmony, he didn't just mean, the, you know, in music, the, the third and the fifth. It, the harmony of the neshama is holding on to the last note. That's, that's harmony. And he explained that the Rebbe explained like this. That when I go like this and I sing, oh, and then you do, you continue my breath and then I take it back from you. You're keeping their life, their lifeline, a little bit, a little bit longer. That's that's really chassidish harmony. Can't imagine it, mamish chassid, thousands together. So tonight we have the privilege to extend our breaths, to extend that place. So one of the most beautiful pieces of, of you could call it nusach, you call it tefillah, is that many of us love so much. Is just the simple, simple nusach of. Thursday night, and this, this, this guy came with his guitar, a big yellow yarmulke, and we went down to the Chadar Ochel of our high school, and in the Chadar Ochel of our high school, we were all sitting around, and barely any of us saw, you know, guys with long beards playing guitar, it wasn't the kind of yeshiva until then, but then that changed and the rest of the world changed after that, and um, this is the nigan, it was, it was you, it was Yehuda, you came that, fr that you know, Thursday night, right after Rib Shlomo died. And uh, most of us didn't ever hear yet the Nigan Yehi Shalom. No, no one ever, we didn't know it then. And um, we sang it for about 45 minutes. It was the only Nigan. It was a Seyis I remember Yom Kippur, a few of our we walked to this Beit Avot, I think it's called Mish'an, in Ranana, it's, a, it's an old, old age home. And uh, we took us an hour to get there, hour to get back, and we just sang this over and over again. So, we didn't even talk. 14-year-old kids in Ranana, not, you know, singing Nikunim. It wasn't, it wasn't our back till then, till then. It was the game changer. That Nigan was the game changer. A few years later, I found a recording of the morning after that Shlomo wrote this Nigan. And it was in the early 80, 80 or 81, in Ojai. Those of you that know Ojai in California. And Rabbi Shlomo said that the night before, he couldn't sleep, and he realized that when he davens for peace, it's the only thing in the world that when I daven for it, I can't daven for it to come on an individual or just on me. Everything else I can daven 
on an individual level, refuah, you need refuah. Parnasa, that person needs parnasa. Simchat hachayim, that person needs a little more simcha. That's yichidim. Shalom, in its essence, is the one thing that's aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. So I want to share with you two gilgulim of this nigun before we know it the way that we sing it today. Because when he wrote this nigun, it didn't sound like the way we sing it. And the words were also a little bit different. But with many nigunim, that's how it, it takes a few, it takes a little bit of time till it comes out the way that we eventually know it. So this is when he wrote it, this is what the nigun sounded like.
Oh yeah, fine, fine. Ah, Chaim. Chaim, there's some seats, I think. There's like one or two seats up here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say Lachaim to someone really special. Really, really special. And uh, in our shul, we dive in um, the parochet is in his memory. Esther of Shalom Brat, Allah Shalom. A man of mamish peace. So. You know, I'll share with you something that I learned from Shalom. I try to do this every time I, I give a shir, a concert somewhere. And it seems to be one of the most powerful tools in the world. I saw him do this. I learned it from him. I had the privilege of, of really of learning so much from him and continuing to learn so much from him. Many of you knew him. You spent one of his last Shabbat Shabbos in the world with him, right? Many of us were close to him. So he, did, he, did a, he used to do a Geval thing, something so unique. He used to ask everyone in the room to close their eyes and think about two people that they think are holy and that, that they love. And when they came up with two people, you'd open your eyes. You know what, let's do it. I'm going to ask each of you right now. Two people that you think are holy, people that you love. Okay, so for some people this could take like two weeks. <laughs> for some people this could take like, you know, two seconds. Okay. Now, there's no right or wrong answer, okay? There's no right or wrong answer. How many people in this room thought of someone in this room? Raise your hand. So that's about 12% of the room, 15% of the room, which is actually which is actually a very high percentage. It's actually a very high percentage. Usually, usually the numbers are, are, are very, very low. Usually the numbers are shockingly low. And Rav Shalom said, he used to say, he's like, you don't understand. He said, you don't understand. When we think with words about love, holiness, the illness of our generation is that those are things that are, it exists, but it's there. It's there, it's there. It's there. It's too deep for me to fathom that it's actually right here. You know, the Torah, Rabbi Shlomo would say, the Torah doesn't ask you to, to love the whole world. You know, it's a beautiful ideal. It's a beautiful sheifa. It's a beautiful aspiration. Rabbi Shlomo says, you know, it says, Ve'afta l'recha kamocha. Ve'afta l'recha kamocha. So, l'recha kamocha, in the, in the English, like the you know, King James translation, what do they say? They say, love thy neighbor. neighbor. Now, the truth is, it's like one of the, one of the only times where you have to think about it a bit more. I grew up living on 520 North Highland Avenue. Okay, does that mean that that Hashem Yisbarach commanded me that I He just wants me to love whoever lived on 518 and 522? And the answer is yes. The Rebbeinu Shleilam is not telling you you have to love the whole world. It's a beautiful ideal, but where do you start? Shlomo said you start with whoever is your neighbor at any given second. That's how he lived. And there's so many people in this room that mamish embody that mida that I've learned so much from. But we have to infuse the consciousness and the awareness that when we talk about love and we talk about holiness, it's right, it's it's right there in front of you. What does David Sachs always say? To cross from one side of the street to the other, you have to swim in an ocean of elokut, of godliness. But that's true about love also. It's right there. It's if we would just realize that that's all the Torah wants in me. You want to be from? I mean, mama, is from. Who is your neighbor right now? Go for it. Go for it. From it out. Go for it. Bemet. It's the most terrifying thing in the world. It's people are terrified from it. So, I saw Shalom do this many, many times. Let's talk about the kind of love we're all, we're all longing for. Chavit, don't hold back for this one, please.
would come to Rav Kook's Purim Tish at night. He had uh, the Rav Nazir, Rav Chaylap, sitting next to him on his sides. And he had then all the Talmidei Chachamim of Yerushalayim come and sit around Rav Kook. And the Pshutei Ha'am, whatever that means, was sitting more in the back. And there was a big sluchit of yain. There was like a, like a, a platter, like a, kind of a bowl that had wine in it with a spoon. And each person that would come to say a Torah would take a spoon and have a little chayim like that, mamash, baragua. Very chill, but very much there. And some years that this would happen, big, big people would come with their shilas that they had, the deep, deep shilas. And Rav Kook was able somehow to just, in his own beautiful, blissful, kohanic way, explain to people what was really bothering him in their hearts and how to heal their hearts. But it was one Purim that the Minhag changed. And Rav Kook was zoning in, 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 Pnima, Chatzar, Ginat, Bitana Melech, then Armon Melech, Beit Melech. He was going there. And Rav Kook then dared the whole crowd. He said, Chavah, I have a request from everyone in this room. I want any of you right now to quote me any Pasuk from the Tanakh 
any pasuk from Rishonim or Achronim, from the Mishnah, from the Gemara, from the Zohar HaKadosh, from anything in our liturgy, any pasuk, and I'm going to prove to you that there's a chi of the Raisa from the pasuk you chose to love Am Yisrael. This whole this this tish can metahir the whole air. It can metahir everything. The air is holy here. It's very sound. Can metahir the air, the avira pnimi that's in our am. And we're on our way. And soon, bezrat Hashem, we'll hear the kohen gadol going to the kodesh kadashim, and we'll see that it'll be coming out of his mouth. Hayayotze mi pi kohen gadol. He didn't have to say anything. It would just emanate. It would just flow through his mouth. Let it be by the end of this night. became an Abba last week. I realize that I have had the privilege of being with many of you and connecting with many of you by the Nacha Noveya Mekor Chochma Rosh B'nei Yisrael Uishcha So many of us have learned the Rebbe's teachings, Rabbi Nachman's teachings, Rabbi Nachman, the, the, the therapist of our door, the one who, who gave us the oxygen to remember that uh, we exist. Hey, we exist. But then there's like, wait a second, I know we exist, but, uh, but who are we? I know, great, we exist. Maze, what does that even mean? But let's just connect for a second to the fire of Rabbi Nassim, because everyone knows that. The Rebbe would give over the most incredible, incredible... Torahs on Friday nights. Passionate, passionate Torahs. And many people were just so tired because it was for hours. But those of you that were privileged to be there by Breslov, when you walk up on that mountain and you see the Bug River, it's the same river Ibn Nachman, Ibn Nassim, Wotovalin. And you can just see it like, like it's happening right now. One Friday night, some of us more than others. <laughs> Binyamin actually titled in that river. So, one Friday night, Reb Nassim heard such words of fire from the Rebbe in Breslov. And he couldn't go shluf. He couldn't go to sleep. So Reb Nassim traveled through Breslov that night, crying. Yes, it was Shabbos, but it wasn't tears of pain. It was tears coming from a bakashot me'en kamoim. Request from none other. And the words he said were, sing with me. I'm 
the 70th teaching, the second part of Likutei Moran. It's a Torah that Rabbi Nachman gave over on his last Shabbos Nachman in the world. Summer of 1810, where the Hasidim, he was ready in Uman. He just moved into a new house. And he saw people, all the Hasidim, starting to come for Shabbos. And the Rebbe said to Rebbe I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why anybody came here. I have nothing to say. You know, some people get invited to like give big schmoozes and speeches, and so in order, let's say today chovat anava, they say, oh, I don't know, I have anything to say, and then they pull out like a big megillah from their pocket. Right? They have plenty to say. If Nachman said, I have nothing to say, it was keep shuto. It's because he knew that this level of hitga, this level of revelation of Torah, it had to be something that's completely shelo'aya afpam, was never there before. And then Reb Nachman began a very long teaching about, amongst other topics, a beautiful place called the Treasury of Unearned Gifts, Otsar Matnat Chinam. And it's a very, very long teaching. It's, in, in, to give over the depth of it, we'd be here till Shavuos, at least. But just for now, I want to share one thought that we learned this morning in Shir. We were learning it with Reb Chaim's Perish. Reb Chaim Kramer quoted his Rosh Hashiva, the famous Rosh Hashiva of Breslev, of Eliyahu Chaim Rosen. Allah Vashalom, Zechit Tzadik Levracham. 
You know, there's a place called Otsar Matnat Chinam, the treasure of unearned gifts. It's like, for instance, each of you think right now about something you have in your life that's precious to you. Do you feel like you're deserving of it? And that's why you have it? Because it makes sense? Ki megiya lecha? Chas v'shalom. Especially when it comes to our children. Can you look at your child and say, you know, I think I deserve them. I did enough in life, like megiya li. Children come from such a place of Matna Shinam, it's unbelievable. Those of us that are privileged to be here living in Eretz Israel, what did we ever do? What Rahmanut Hashem has on us? Raising our children with Avira de Eretz Israel, Matna Shinam never gets old. Alavai, Chaim, it should never get old to any of us, Bezrat Hashem. So Red Nachman continues and says there, but sometimes there's anashim pshutim, the tzaddik, he can't, in the moment, be engaged in deep Torah study, delving into the mystical side of things. He has to become what's called a prastic, an ish pashut. And over there, <coughs> where does he receive vitality and life when he has to become an ish pashut? The Rebbe says, from a place called Otsar Matnas Chinam, or the treasury of unearned gifts. It's a place Hashem created a long time ago. It was a place that the life world itself was receiving its sustenance before it received the Torah. So Rabbi Rosen said there, it's not enough to know that this place exists. Gebaut, I learned a Chiddush. I learned in, I learned in Shir, there's a place called Otay Matnas Chinam. You know, when you learn the Rebbe's teachings, when you learn Rebbe Nachman's teachings, if you don't run and make a tefillah out of what you just learned, it just remains very holy teaching. But it didn't reach Eitz Chaim yet. It's still an Eitz Das Tov. So Rabbi Rosen said, just the fact that I know that there's a treasury of unearned gifts and Otsar Matnat Chinam is not enough. You want to learn Rabbi Nachman's saying? You got to ask to be able to receive from there. So the place that we're connecting to tonight is Tfila asking Rebona Shalom, Lo dey megiya li olom. I have no idea if I deserve it or not. But for the sake of my children, I have to get my act together. For the sake of my wife, for the sake of my Shabbos table, for the sake of Am Yisrael, in Eretz Yisrael, in the whole world, please let me taste from this Otsar Matnas Chinam. Please let me delve deeper and deeper into all the teachings all the tzaddikim, all the tzaddikim amitiim shebedoreinu, l'chol tzaddikim amitiim shochnei afar shebaaretzim. And b'frat to the Rebbe, nachal noveya mekor chokma. One more time, my nachal.
Okay, boys, we're almost there. But there's a, this last sugya that Mashiach is, 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 is waiting for us to crack. And that's the sugya called Mi Ani. That's the sugya called Who Am I? I had one of the most depressing gigs of my life. A few years ago, without mentioning names, towns, or cities, or people. I have to be very, yeah. No, no one here was there. And uh, I was one of those gigs, it's like the remote control gigs, you know? It's, it's like you said, people in the crowd, they're like, you came, you know, you put your neshama on display, and they're like deciding whether they like what you're doing with your neshama or not by either talking to someone going on their phone or waiting for, no, oin did it oin, like one of those kind of, you know, nights. And uh, it was so, it was, it, was, it was depressing. It was very depressing. So I realized, you know, no one, I don't really think anyone here is listening. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing myself a nigan right now. And this nigan came down. The following nigan. It didn't have words. A year or two ago, one of our trips to the Ukraine, which you all invited to join us. Bezat uh, Hashem, we're going to a lot of new places this year, but one of the trips to the Ukraine, we were on the bus from, from Medjabush to, Ber, to Berdichev, or from Berdichev to Hadich, I don't remember right now. And uh, these were the words came down, Mamish because it's the Ashpa of least Tzadikim. And it's a song that has six questions. And I'm so happy that I was so lonely that night on stage that forced me to ask myself really these questions. And if you know, please join me. Six questions that we, we can't get by without asking them in our life. It feels like this is the last sugya before the great day is coming that, uh, that we have to deal with.
group is, you know, for ourselves, me and me. And then when we go to Miata, we're asking a ship Miata. I don't know. Maybe it's asking ourselves Miata from the outside, Lodea. But I do know, we all know that the first question that man was ever asked is Miata. Ayeka, right? So we say back to Hashem, Ayeka, you want to know where I am? Where are you? I am a Konkomodo. It's this Aye game. Hashem's okay with it as long as we keep the, you know, we stay in the match. We don't have to answer as long as we keep on asking. So one more time from the top. Oh, me. Before we, we, we say goodnight, just for tonight, I, um, I want us to remember one last teaching from Rav Kook, from the Kohen. Rav Kook says, it's great after you do nights that are filled with Givaldiga wiping out Amalek. It's amazing. It's beautiful. We have a, this is the Parsha right now, to wipe it out, to get rid of it, to make sure you suppress and you banish out darkness. Shaila is, what are you filling it with? Rav Kook says, how do you fulfill the mitzvah of Mechiyat HaMalek, of wiping it out? This is an amazing title. He says that in the Gemara, in the in, in Hilchus Shabbos, the halacha of Mochek, right? One of the three name halachot of Mochek is Mochek al menat lichtov. Right? How do you manage transgressing when you erase something on Shabbos in order to then write something? So if Cook says an amazing thing, the halacha says, Mechika be'alma is nothing. It's a chabala. It's not, a, it's not over the malacha. If you just erase something, but not to fill it in with something, you, didn't, you weren't over the malacha of mochek. You didn't, you didn't do the greatest thing. It's a transgression, but a much lower level. You transgress when you erase in order to write. So if that's true about going over the halacha of mochek, if Cook says, you know how you wipe out a malach? When you have kavana ha mochek, it's not just, okay, I'm going to get rid of evil. 
Shaila is, what am I doing with Kedusha? So in Purim, the whole energy isn't just, you know, it's Kemu the Kemu, because it wasn't enough that Haman's hung. You think it'd be enough right now if our Oivim would all be hung by Ezrat Hashem by the end of tonight? You think, you think that'd be enough? That, 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 oh, then it would all be good. Rebun Shalem is looking at us and saying, who wants to mamish wipe out Amalek on the level of Rav Kuks? Hamochek amenat lichtov. Hashem should bless us to fill our kadim that are now, Bezrat Hashem, being emptied. When we empty out the, the energy of Amalek, of Suffolk, of hatred, of, of, of the, the stench from the Bechirot and all these things that are so unimportant on the Neshama level, unimportant. Hashem should give us enough confidence in ourselves there's no more Asher Kor Chavadarech. We're done with you. You can write down, right now, right now, we're extending the Chasima. Gmar Chasima Tova, everyone. You're extending it. You can fill in in Hamoha. Amochek Almanat Lichtov. What are you writing in? Sky's the limit. Not even that. Beyond the sky. <coughs> table set. Everything is right there. What are you signing? What are you signing? So tonight we're signing on Dibuk Chaverim right now. We're signing on getting closer to each other, no matter what. To be better and better friends to each other, it's, well, there's nothing left. Rabbi Shlomo said the avoda before the six million was a seilach harav. After the six million, the avoda was this next part of the Mishnah. Uknele chachav. That's what the avoda is right now. We're doing it. We're doing it. And we should do it even stronger. Oh.